It's working. I'm leaving you and I'm fine without you. I've never worn anything like this in my life. Hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited because today we finally get to do a thrift flip. It's been a long time. Actually, we're gonna do a bit of both. Sewing from scratch, thrift flip, as you saw from the title, Netflix inspired. I hope you are happy with the shows that we have chosen. Today's thrift flip is thanks to our COVID friendly online thrift retailer. If you haven't heard of them, it's Thread. Up. So ThreadUp is not your typical thrift store in that it is online. You can shop for over 40,000 brands. There's literally new arrivals every day. Many of your favorite brands will be there. I picked out something from Stuart Weizmann as well as Banana Republic. And you can get up to 90% off estimated retail. It's actually so exciting when they have the original price and the price you pay and you're like, show me the money. And if you stay tuned, you'll get a special promo code to get a discount. Also, if you're eager, you can always check the description. It'll be right there. I love ThreadUp for a couple of different reasons, but it can all be summed up in that shopping is so easy on their website. You can set it up so that it filters results only by your size, so that you only see things that fit you. Then you can further filter it by style, by brands, by colors, narrow it down to the exact things that you're looking for. Then you can see the notes on any item's condition that you're interested in. My method is I'll favorite anything that matches what I'm looking for, and then I'll use my favorites as my final curated shopping review before I check out. Because of the time of year, I chose items that are spring friendly. I can pair them with the DIYs that we're even doing in this video today. And due to some body changes, I also really wanted to pick up a few maternity items. First up, I was looking for a really easy to put together look and I found this super gorgeous dress by the brand Stina Goya. It's got these balloon sleeves, beautiful cuffs, this delicate soft collar, and then even ruffles along the bottom of the dress. This one is original retail $350, but on ThreadUp it was $66.99. I already took some photos with this when I did my turtleneck video and you guys might have seen it on Instagram, but it's this super beautiful little shoulder bag Christian Livingston collection got a little tiny zip on the inside too this one plus a promo that ThreadUp had at the time made this purse come under $15 for a quality piece that just goes well with so many outfits makes me feel excited for the few times I head outside to do groceries and whatnot I'm truly curious how old these are but I found these Stuart Weitzman silver little pumps. You can tell that these weren't worn too many times. The condition is great. They kind of go perfectly with today's video, so I'm just gonna show them to you on the feet, but then in a complete outfit later on. And the silver is so nice because it's like gentle, but it's there, just like a little bit of an upgrade on gray. The next one, I'm already wearing, washed it, and enjoying it already. This is Ingrid & Isabel, popular maternity brand, but I'm so happy I managed to get something secondhand. Again, super happy with the quality of this piece. Like you can look at all of the notes when you're shopping online and they price items according to the wear that might be visible in them. The fifth item, another one that was under $15. I got this Banana Republic shoulder bag. I just thought the little bit of yellow in the leather was so cute. I even think this slit in the back means I could convert this into a little bit of a fanny pack stitch. And the last item in my box, probably committing a fashion faux pas. It's this Dennis Basso spring jacket. She's got pockets. She's lightweight, she's comfortable, she's spacious. This one is original retail, $370, but on ThreadUp, $73.99. If like me, you'd like to shop all the brands at ThreadUp, you can get an extra 30% off with the code WENDY. Check the link in the description. Happy thrifting. Keep trying to buy secondhand if you can. Let's make some dresses. Inspiring the prom look today is the crown. Because the last season focused so much on the introduction of Diana as the new addition to the family, I feel like I had to go with the most iconic Diana, Princess Diana look ever, the revenge dress. Princess Diana was going to a gala at the Serpentine Gallery in London. This is what people imagined to be a difficult day in her life, but instead she stepped out looking so confident, so beautiful. And the dress itself is a design that's just not really normal to the British royal family. It's super fitted open shoulders. It just kind of captured a strong, confident woman leaving behind 
a royal family, weirdly like a history repeats itself type of situation right now. The designer was Christina Stambolian. Here's some more photos that show it in better lighting so we can see the details. Also from Thread Up, I got this pretty cute rosy Pope black maternity dress. Here's how it looks on me right now. Its color and texture is right, but the silhouette and the way it fits is what I'm gonna be working on today. It is also pure silk, which is nice but also scary. We're gonna see how few steps I can take to get this cute little dress to say something more like, I'm leaving you and I'm fine without you. I'm gonna start with the top first and then we'll deal with the skirt. The back is just one straight invisible zipper and I would like to change it from a high round neck to a low V. So I'm just gonna cut it open and try not to tamper with the zipper. At the bottom of the V-shape in the back, I cut off the top of the zipper about two centimeters away from the bottom of the V. Now I'm gonna seam rip all the way down to like two centimeters below. The back has three layers in total. I hope this is showing up on camera, but the farthest one here is the inner lining that touches the body. The top one here is the sheer pretty textured layer. And this one in the middle, I'm gonna do a basting stitch to secure it to the outside so they don't slip and slide while I deal with them. I think the next step is a bit of sewing gymnastics. This whole back that was cut and reshaped, I have to sew it so that it's right sides together and right now it's naturally touching wrong sides together. So I think I have to flip it over the zipper and then sew it down. I feel like I'm just gonna have to keep feeding it through the machine and see how far I can get before I have to stop. For the bottom half of the dress, I'm cutting out this piece of black stretch velvet. It is about 100 centimeters by 70 centimeters. Make sure if you're doing this, the direction of stretch runs horizontally across the body. From there, with the fabric folded in half, you can taper the shape so that it hits your waist, your belly, your hips, and your legs all at the correct width. Under the bust, I was aiming for 82 centimeters. Then around 20 centimeters, it flared out to 100 centimeters wide. And then about 40 centimeters down, it started Started narrowing down again to 90 centimeters. I sewed these curved edges right sides together and I used my gathering foot just to get it all scrunched up in one move. I was happy with the amount of gathering so I encased it in some bias tape which just helps to lock it in from shifting around. As I often do with stretch fabrics, I hem it with a zigzag stitch and an elastic so that it still has a stretchy opening. After that first stitch, you just flip the edge in twice, one more zigzag stitch, and it's closed. Not to gloss over any details, I feel like a key part of Princess Diana's look is this major bling of a necklace. So here to perform some wizardry, Julia. So today we're gonna attempt to make Princess Diana's sapphire and pearl necklace. So I ordered an actual gem online, but the only thing is that this is not sapphire blue. So we're gonna attempt to change the color of this. We're gonna remove the backing with the nail file, and then we're gonna color it with a Sharpie, and then we're gonna cover that with the aluminum foil so it has the reflective surface in the back. You're gonna need some pearls and rhinestones, a few silver jump rings, and a fancy multi-loop closure, as well as some fabric, glue, and pliers will help bring it all together. The first step is to carefully glue the gem to some stable fabric that is relatively close to your skin tone, and then add two rhinestone halos around it because one says rich and two says rich rich. Then remember that you're actually rich beyond belief and you add one more ring on top of the big gem so it's all blending in nicely. Clean up the excess glue as best you can so that it's glimmering and then trim the fabric so it's all hidden. If you want it to last past midnight, probably a few stitches by hand will help. Now poking between the rhinestones and through the fabric, here's where you add all the jump rings that are going to connect to the pearl strands. These strands are all different lengths. You kind of just have to measure the changes that happen between a choker length and a small necklace on you. All of these strands need another jump ring at the free end, which attach to the back clasp. And here's how we switched this thrifted dress into this Princess Diana inspired formal look.
one with a Bridgerton inspired look. I actually have not watched this show, so I just tried to do as much YouTube research as possible. Sorry, if you hear a lot of sound in the background, it's Sakwa running around with the toy she just found, but I haven't actually watched this show. Maybe, maybe I will at some point, but I, I just did a lot of research instead. This is about the fashion, not about the storyline. The vibe with Bridgerton is Regency fashion. They've made their own choices to kind of like modernize it. I want to further modernize. So we're gonna do a combination of Regency, Bridgerton, Selkie. And there are elements I find that kind of like tie these together. For Regency, a little bit of the small puff sleeve, Empress waistline, Selkie, gonna do a little bit of that exaggerating gathering and hopefully get a bit more of like a floating effect. Bridgerton really just influenced the fabrics that I chose. I'm super excited to show them to you. The not as picky fabric you'll need is a lining. And then as per Daphne Bridgerton, who I understand is the main character, I have chosen a beautiful powder blue. This is so nice. It's like baby blue, but just so gentle. So for like a little bit of a tulle overlay, some of you might recognize this fabric. Pearl tulle. So we're gonna use this for the skirt and sleeves. And lastly, to make sure you look like you come from money, I have this really pretty embroidered lace. It's got pearls all over it. It's terrifying to handle. We're gonna steal a bit of this to try to look fancy. Now time to cut the fabric. Nobody likes this step, but it has to be done. I'm hoping Empress might actually be one of the easier silhouettes I've made, but to help me out, I'm using a pattern that I have made before in my letter low kit. I'll put a link in the description if you have no idea what this is. I don't wanna have to reintroduce it every time with you guys, but it's a kit that has helped me out immensely with drafting lots of patterns. This one I used before to create an organza top inspired by a Beyonce look. It gives a square neckline and it's super fitted. Copying that, I get these pattern pieces. This one is the back. I do think I will cut an L shape out of the back so it has a square neckline. Here's the front. I noticed on Daphne Bridgerton's dress, darts are super not noticeable at all in the top and I wonder if they manage to just like migrate everything out of the way. So I'm gonna do a little dart manipulation right now. See if we get any good results. Starting with the front piece from the letter low kit to do dart manipulation, I just cut open all of the darts that are presented. And then swinging the darts along the fulcrum, you'll want to bring together the parts where you don't want there to be a dart. And then as you do that, you'll see more of a dart opens up somewhere else. So I want to get rid of this one. I close it up. Obviously that causes this one to get bigger. I'm also gonna close off this top one just a little bit. The length of this is crop length, but because we're going with empress length, once you cut it off about here, these little bits of darts will not be as significant. Let's give this a try. Measuring myself from the waist up until the bottom edge of my bust, it looked like we could take away 10 centimeters from the bottom. From there, it's good to sew a mock-up, especially if you're dealing with fabric that's a little more formal and expansive. So here's the first draft. Great opportunity to make some adjustments. There's some extra fabric, as you can see, along the back zipper that could be taken away. Also, the waist wasn't quite straight, so I removed a bit of fabric from the back to level it out. As a personal choice, I felt like I wanted to raise the neckline a little bit and then the shoulders you can see how there's not a lot to give on the inner edge and so to slim the shoulder straps I only cut away fabric from the outside of the strap but not the inside of the strap. Here it is after a couple of adjustments feeling a lot better about it. The extra fabric that's like making a tent out here in the front it can be gathered up in just like cute little gathers from my research that's very Regency era appropriate so I feel good about it. After all those adjustments, it gets us these little patterns. This little lady is for the front line of symmetry right here, so cut along a fold. And this is for the back. Whew. I feel like so many shots ago, I was like, time to get the fabric. And I still haven't really cut the fabric, but now it's happening for real. Oh my goodness. Very quickly, I'm reminded why lace embroidered clothing is just so pricey and it's because it's so tedious. The embroidery tool layer has been basted to the inner blue layer. I've got one front and two backs. 
gonna put these right sides together at the shoulders as well as on the sides under your armpit back's gonna stay open for a zipper ah, another bead to help me move faster i think i will just cut beads that are in the critical path of sewing so that i can actually use my sewing machine Ooh, i should also use a zipper foot because then my foot is less likely to collide with beads this is the transportation method between the ironing board and the sewing table so as not to leak beads everywhere. For the sleeves, we've got tool layer with the blue underneath. I think I have to literally cut these ones that are too close to the seam free. I'm gonna baste all the way around and the one thing you'll notice is that here, the tool sticks out farther than the blue. When basting, I am gonna line up the edges, which will actually, hopefully, make the tool stick out just a little bit so she floats in a pretty way. Quick refresher, if you aren't too familiar with gathering stitches, two parallel stitches on the longest stitch length you have. You wanna tie the top two stitches together. And on the other side, you wanna tie the bottom two stitches together. Did the same thing to the tool layer. Once you're ready to gather, pull on any of the strings that didn't get tied together into a knot and you just use that as a lever to adjust until it fits the armhole. We pull and she gathers. Sleeves are done. Put them right sides together at the ends and then gave it a press so that they're all smooth and beautiful. Now we can attach them to our tiny tank top. First getting a few beads out of the critical path and then right sides together all the way around both armholes. Oh, it's working. We have a little extra flotation on the tool. This whole cut and assembly is repeated in lining so you can be all smooth and have all the raw edges locked away. I always get topsy-turvy when attaching lining to the shell, but uh, I'm gonna put them together now. Ooh, neck all done. Gonna take it over to the iron and give it a press, trim the sharp corners, and then understitch so that the lining stays tucked on the inside. I press the neckline. What's I shot the sheriff? I shot the sheriff. I don't know that song. <laughs> Anyways, neckline is all pressed. I'm also really stoked because I somehow managed to successfully join the lining and understitch on one of the sleeves without getting the whole thing all like. I'm gonna put in the description the blog that I was reading to help me with this. The blog does have a bit of a visually stressful combination of photos and text, but I have emerged victorious, so I'll show you what I did. I'm supposed to reach in between the lining and the shell at the armpit, grab these two underarm seams, and bring them through. Put them right sides together, and now trusting the process, just sew all the way around through the machine. Moment of truth. Flipping it back. Ooh. Mind games. Next is to understitch. In that case, again, you reach in from the underarm, separating the shell and the lining. And then once you keep sliding, you can get to a point where the lining is stretched out so you can understitch the raw edge to the lining. And then press, and you've got beautiful finished edges on the sleeves. <laughs> Onto the skirt. I'm gathering up a three meter circumference rectangle all the way around me. So we've got one long front piece that's 150 centimeters joined to two back pieces on each side that are 75 centimeters each. Later, the two back pieces will join together in the back with an invisible zipper. Oh, shopping tag. Now she just needs the two parallel gathering stitches along the top edge so we can start to scrunch this up. Here she is all pinned up, looks nice. But the plan was to also gather tool. What? Uh, tool, no tool, tool. Time to gather some tool. Yeah. Ah! 
to get this bodice attached to the skirt for hopefully the last time all of the beads and sequins along the critical sewing path were removed as well here in the chest underneath each boob put a few little gathers so that it would cup around the boob instead of tenting out at the sleeves i thought it would be cute to close them off in this sort of pleated curtain style this is just done by hand with a few key anchor stitches since everything was fitting okay the invisible zipper can go in the back. This one has the lining attached. I feel like this dress has gone on for so long, so I'm just gonna link the Chanel skirt video where I showed how to do lining with invisible zippers. And on the bottom with tulle, you can generally trim it since it won't fray. And then with the satin, give it a little skinny straight stitch hem. <laughs> with how these thrifted Stuart Weitzman's pulled together this look. If you want to do your own online thrifting, don't forget to check the link in the description and you can get an extra 30% off your first order with my code WENDY. There'll be more photos on my Instagram at with Wendy and if you want to watch the YouTube videos that I've been using for research, I'm going to put those in the description because they are YouTubers that I've really enjoyed watching lately. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye. Thank you.